the desperation was terrible in my heart. I was in great tension. I was really perspiring. And so I turned around, pulled out the finger, and I clapped hand. And she opened her eyes and looked at me. And I said, she nodded her head. So I said, Mama? She said, Mama? Papa? Papa? Praise God? Praise God? Suddenly it dawned upon me that she got healed. Oh, I jumped all over my platform, all over. And then I said, you sick people, come forward, come forward. I was so emboldened. I would push, put my hand up on the head, command the sick to leave. And I commanded six people to be healed. So many people began to be healed. Wonderful thing happened that night. And from that evening, the news began to spread all over the town that the Christ appeared in the ten church and began to heal the people. From the next day, the tent was full with the sick people. So many sick people. When I met the need of people through Jesus Christ, still people came. You know, Korea traditionally has been a Buddhist country and very Confucianistic. Every home, they have the altar for their ancestors. So in Korea, to become a Christian, you've got to have a great struggle in the home. You must deny the ancestor. You must deny the Confucius and the Buddhism. So it is not easy decision. People, before they make decisions for Jesus, they think over and over again in their heart if they should really make that decision because they would confront with great opposition when they go back home. So just by preaching the theory or theology, people will not risk their lives. But when you meet their need in Jesus Christ, when they experience Jesus, when they are given the heaven, then they would make decision to stand against that opposition. Many homes are broken because they make a uh, decision for Jesus Christ. And many young people ostracized out of their own family and society. But all oh, the people would come from all over the places. And one whole evening at midnight, I went out to pray. Then one young boy, about 12 years old, he was crippled and he was pulling himself. And he touched my back while I was praying and says, are you the pastor? So I said, yes, I am. I said, I was, I'm a beggar. I've been begging at the Seoul Railroad Station. And someone came to me and gave me a pamphlet and told me that I should come to this tent church. There I would meet Jesus Christ and he would heal me. So since I can't see Jesus, you are the representative. Would you pray for me? So I said, let me see your leg. And when I saw the leg, leg was all stuck this way. And uh, so s skinny that it was like a Japanese uh, chopstick. <laughs> very, very skinny, stuck up like this. And in my heart, I said, my God, Jesus himself would not even heal this kind of guy. He was terrible. So I laid my hand on him and I prayed, but I felt so cold in my heart. I could not pray the prayer of faith. And so I said, you wait here. I need to get more faith to the Lord, from the Lord. So I went to the forefront and I began to pray, Lord, why do you always send this kind of difficult case to me? I am not Oral robot. I can't handle this kind of case. And if you will not give me faith, I can't do anything. I prayed and prayed. Then I went and I said, let me see. I'll lay hand on your leg and pray. And I laid and ice water poured upon my heart. And when I opened the eyes and saw the leg, I couldn't believe. I couldn't even pray. So I said, no, I need more faith. You wait here. So I went. 
And I began to pray and pray and pray and crying. I was really crying my heart out. Then strange thing happened. Great movement of Holy Spirit came upon my heart. And it's building up. The level of the faith was building up. Finally, I was given the supernatural faith. It was gift of faith. It was not my faith. I was unbelieving. But the Holy Spirit came with great anointing and the level of faith was so lifted up. I felt as if I could push the whole earth and the whole globe move. So I went to him and said, now I've got faith from the Lord. And there was a few of my young people were praying together. I said, you come and you get hold of the shoulder. Instead of prayer, I pushed, put my hand on the knee and with all the strength, I pushed down in the name of Jesus Christ. And the bone cracked. And this boy said, Mama, this preacher is killing me. Killing me. Oh, he's killing me. But I, at that time, felt that if I could just uh, break the knee and put back again in the name of Jesus Christ, he would be healed. You please don't do that. It's very dangerous. <laughs> But at that moment, I was given such a faith that I began to think in supernatural way that I can dislodge the, 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 the knee, then I could put the leg, leg back to that place. I felt that way. So I pushed with all of my strength on the knee and knee cracked. And then when I lifted it up, he was dangling like this. But I closed my eyes. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, walk. And I pushed. Then I said, Lord, it's up to you now. I don't know. <laughs> I closed my eyes because I had no courage to open my eyes. But soon the young people were shouting and crying and, and a great uproar. And when I opened my eyes, this guy was running around the tent. Running around, running around, running around. Next day, this boy was going all over the town, showing his legs that he was healed. So, people would swarm to the church. There I found the secret. You can still change the whole society by meeting their need. And you can't simply meet their need in such a way. You must pray so that you be full of the Holy Spirit. I pray every day for more than five hours. I pray in known language and in tongues, hours and hours and hours. Always I'll be drunken with the Holy Spirit. Then the Word of God would become a living power. When I don't pray, the Word of God stays in the Bible. But when I pray for more than five hours, all the words jump out of the Bible and they start to move in my life. And so at my pioneer area, I stayed for three years. And during the three years, I preached the living Jesus who meet our daily need. And I preached very strong about threefold blessings of God. Like a third John verse 2, that beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health as thy soul pro prospers. I would preach to them that if you would be saved and full of the Holy Spirit living for God, then God would come and touch you and heal you. And many, many people would be healed. Of course, there would be many people unhealed. And those kind of things you can't explain. But you are not going to talk all of those unhealed people. You are going to talk about healed people. <laughs> because we are not God. Still, we have a lot of the shortage in our lives. So many people will not get healing, but more people get healed. In my own experience, when 10 sick people come, about seven of them would be healed completely. And three of them would not be healed. But still, 
they would be saved, seeing God meet need of other people. They would not complain. They would accept Jesus. And uh, in that area, people were living in such a poverty-stricken way. Their mind is full of poverty consciousness, curse consciousness, failure consciousness. So I determined to redeem their mind from the curse consciousness, failure consciousness, inability, impossibility consciousness. So I preached very strong about the redemption of Jesus Christ. I said, you folks, Christ was hung up on the cross, carrying you a curse. Thorns and thistles on his head, on his two palms and legs. He took your curse away. As that is reality. Jesus took all of your curse. You are living under curse. And since you are living under curse, whatsoever you do, your works are cursed that you will not produce any fruit. But once you get out of curse and God's blessing come, whatsoever you do, you are going to be prosperous. And I say that you should know the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, who was rich, but he, who became poor for you, so that you may be rich in Jesus Christ. And I said, if you come under the blessing of Jesus Christ, then you should plant one-tenth and above that. Blessing would come, but if you don't sow any seed, how could God give you the harvest? I said, suppose a farmer really received blessing from the Lord, but the farmer would sit and would not go out in the field and sow anything. Then he would not harvest anything. So I said, when you accept Jesus and when you get redemption in your mind, then start to work. So see, I say that get out the poverty consciousness. You must have the prosperity consciousness. You must get out of the, the, the failure consciousness. You must get in the success consciousness, victory consciousness. I myself was confirming that every day those days. So you are tremendously blessed by God. You are very rich in Jesus Christ. You are very successful in Jesus Christ. You are very prosperous in every way, whatsoever you do. Because the Bible says, God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all what you ask, not end, or think. What you ask or think. So either you ask or think, that become the vessel through which God pours his blessing. So if you don't have any vessel to receive God's blessing, then all the God's blessing would be wasted. Mind should be renewed. It is very important. You know, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit dwells in our spirit. Our spirit is analogous to the Holy of Holy. Our mind is analogous to the holy place. And our body is analogous to the courtyard. The Holy Spirit dwells in your spirit. But Holy Spirit should flow through your mind to the courtyard, your physical life, your circumstances. But when your mind is blockaded with all the negative thinking, then the spirit in your heart can't flow through you. When you receive Jesus Christ, your spirit becomes born again instantly. But your mind should be renewed. For such a long time, your mind has been contaminated by the negative thinking in this life. Your mind should be renewed through the word of God. Then your mind becomes supple to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the Lord would flow through your mind to the courtyard of your life. Many people, they are born again. Yes, by accepting Jesus, their spirit becomes born again instantly. But they, the Holy Spirit dwells in their own spirit, the Holy of Holy. But still the Spirit of the Lord should flow through the holy place, the mind. Mind should be renewed. And your mind can be only renewed by the scripture, the word of God. Those days I was renewing my mind every day by reading scripture, meditating by the scripture and prayer. Then I would confess 
the affirmative confession show you are enriched through the redemption of Jesus Christ. You are successful through Jesus Christ. You are prosperous through the redemption of Jesus Christ. And I will not accept any feelings, sensation, or circumstances. So I would teach people to disregard their feeling, to disregard their circumstances. I ask them to stand strong on the redeeming grace of Lord Jesus Christ. And the people were taught and they got out of the inferiority complex, poverty consciousness, and failure consciousness. Then I said, you go out, you sow the seed. And people began to work and bring the tithe. And the people were so poverty stricken, they had no money. Some family brought a few cabbage. And some family brought one egg or a chicken and rice paddy. And so I could not sell those things. So I had a variety of things to eat as a pastor. <laughs> some of people opposed. This, is, this pastor come and he tried to exploit our lives. But I said, no, no, I don't do that. This is the principle how to go into the God's system of the prosperity. You are now in Jesus Christ and you are under the blessing of God. And then you must sow the seed and tithe is the seed. And above the tithe, you are really joining to the rich blessings of God's system. So people began to bring tithe and above the tithe, they brought money for the church building and things like that. And I tell you, in three years, whole slum become cleansed. When I go to the place where I started my church, we don't find any slum at all. People would come and they found a job, they created a job, and they become rich and they build a home. Wonderful thing happened in those three years. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's mighty God. And through those three years of my pioneering period, I've found my practical theology. I call my theology the theology of hope. I could build a powerful hope in their heart by preaching the Jesus who meet our daily need. People are in great need. Their need has threefold, spiritual need, physical need, and environmental need. And Christ Jesus on the cross met all their need through his shed blood. Many people are not partaking the fullness of the blessing of Jesus Christ. They are only one part of the blessing of Jesus Christ. They claim the spiritual blessing, but they are not claiming the blessing of healing, and prosperity. Well, people are taking that I'm preaching the prosperity. I don't preach prosperity for the sake of prosperity. People need to be prosperous to feed their children, to send their children to school, and to support church, to support ministry. Prosperity for our own flesh would be an idol letters. But when you have prosperity to help your family and to help the church, that prosperity is wonderful. God has prospered our church tremendously. We have our university, and through our university, we are educating wonderful young people with Jesus, uh, the Christian doctrine. We have the world's largest prayer mountain. We call it prayer city. It's like a prayer city. And then we have the largest social work in Asia. And we have our daily newspaper with a half million circulation with gospel of Jesus Christ. Our newspaper going to the presidential office, all the minister's office, all the rich people, poor people. We are influencing whole society because we have money. God needs money. And God raised money through you. God blesses you and you give tithe and offering to the Lord. And through that, God prospers his work. We have more than 600 missions working around the world. They need money. 
my mission who work in Africa and Afghanistan, India, and other part of the world, they need money. We should supply money to them to carry out the ministry. And we have NGO, and through NGO, we are now in Iraq and Iran, where the earthquake have of the country. We are building home, we are building the hospital, we are cleaning the water. We are doing all of these things because God has blessed us. Whenever I come to my church nowadays, and every service, more than 50,000 people come to the service. And I could not believe my eyes. I said, God, who sent all of these people over and over again, over and over again? Who sent all of these people? They are all well clothed. They all drive their own car. But once they were poverty stricken, they were eating from hand to mouth. They were in terrible situation. But I preach Jesus who meet our need in threefold way, spiritual need, physical need, environmental need. And they renew their mind first. And they believe Jesus. They sow the seed and God blessed. And now in our church, we don't have those kind of poverty stricken people. God has blessed us tremendously. And so I tell you, brothers and sisters, in your life, try to practice your Christian faith by renewing your mind first. God is not a million miles away. He is in you. Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit is in you now. He is not in the heavenly places. He is in you now through the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father is present with you. When I was in 10 church, one farmer's wife, she was very uneducated, ignorant, came to me and she said, Pastor, I was Buddhist, but when I go to the Buddhist temple, I see the image of Buddha on the altar. I can address myself to him, but I come to your church and you don't have anything. So I want to write a letter to Jesus Christ. Please give me the address of Jesus Christ to me. <laughs> I was struck with a great doubt in my heart. I said, Sister, I don't know the address of Jesus Christ. <gasps> what? You are the servant of the Lord. You still don't know your Lord's address? Are you the hypocrite? So, no, I'm not hypocrite. But the Bible says that God and Jesus Christ in heaven, Heavenly Father, Jesus who is in heaven. But you are right. I don't know where is heaven. Globe is around. The people who live on top, heaven is there. People who live on down here, heaven is there. On here, right side, left side, where is heaven? But I said, if you give me one week, I will find the address of Jesus Christ. And through that one week, I said, oh, God, show me the address of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know the address, and this farmer's wife want me to give her the address. And I was praying, and I was uh, reading the Bible. Finally, I found the address of Jesus Christ. Amazingly, if you like to write down the address of Jesus, you will ready. Now, get the pen and paper ready to write the address of Jesus Christ. The address is in... Uh, Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 12. In those days, in that days, I will be in Father, you in me, I in you. Amen. Your address is address of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Next Sunday, when she came, I said, I found the address, and she was ready to write. I said, first, write down your address. So she wrote down her address. I said, that is address of Jesus Christ. She was very angry. You are teasing me. I said, no, you read the scripture. In that day, I will be in my Father. Father in me and I in you. So wherever you are, that is the address of Jesus Christ. This is true. Now, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit dwells in your spirit. You are the temple. Tabernacle of the wilderness disappeared. Solomon's 
temple destroyed. Now, God does not need any other physical temple. You are the temple of God. You are the holy nation. And God dwells in you through you, through your faith, through your prayer, through your mouth confession. God ministers to the need of people. You are very important to people. Don't disassociate yourself from God. Many people think that I am here, God is in that heaven. We are separated. No, it is not so. Bible says you are the holy nation. And God is the king of holy nation. You are king. He dwells in you through the Holy Spirit. God wants to build this kingdom through you. You are terribly needed to God. As much as you need God, so God needs you. You and God are together, one, in unity, in the Holy Spirit. This is reason. The God who dwells in your spirit, in your holy place, should have free-flowing through the holy place, your mind, through the courtyard, your physical body. And that's the reason you must renew your mind through the redeeming grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Renew daily, and you should become a new creature in Jesus Christ. Not old creature, new creature, thinking in new way, in the way of redemption. In your mind, you must always see how Jesus Christ transferred you from the dominion of devil to the kingdom of Son of God. And so you are redeemed in the spirit, redeemed in your physical body, redeemed in your livelihood, your environment. You are a new person. You have the threefold blessing. Your spirit prospers, and your body is going to be healed, and you are going to have abundance to minister to the need of people. And the holistic gospel is true gospel of Jesus Christ. God wants to bless you whole person, not a part of person. But there's order, spirit first, then blessing in your life and physical healing. All of these things start by renewing your mind, then by faith, practical faith, and by sowing the seed, then you can expect miracle. That became the foundation of my ministry in 1958. And since that time, I've founded three churches. 1961, I came to the downtown and many, many leading pastors told me that I would not be successful because I would be a failure. I was trying to start my second church among the many big denominational church. But I knew in my spirit that I would have great success in my ministry because I was ready to meet the need of people. I was not trying to teach them the theology. I was not trying to keep God the, the, I will not talk about God to them. I was ready to give God to them. From 1961 till 1973, I was staying in that church, and we had 18,000 members in the church. And the whole place was packed with people, and the whole streets were packed on Sunday with people. That There were uh, no car traffic, and the city government begged me to move out of the town because of the whole traffic jam all over the city because I was Christian. So, thirdly, I resigned from the church and I came to present church. And at that time, people thought that I would be a terrible failure because there was no road, no running water, no electricity. I came to the, the small island and but I knew that I could be successful because people would come when I meet their need. They would come to the top of a mountain. They would cross over the river. They would come once Christ meet their need in their lives. And I started that church in 1973, and now we have 700 
50,000 people coming. And if I were young, I would have started to build a bigger church. It's not difficult to have a million people in the church. But now I'm not a young man. I'm now 68 years old. And I'm not in the age of the tr starting new life. So I'm helping my young people, my disciples, to have bigger visions and dreams. In two years, I'm going to retire. But I tell you, Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is not living a million miles away. He is in you right now. Right now. Devil comes to rob you, kill you, and destroy you. But Jesus Christ came to give you life, and life more than abundantly. Brothers and sisters, have a big vision. Have a big vision. God is far greater than what you think. God is ready to bless you far beyond your imagination. We have been so narrowed in your thinking, in our faith. But when you enlarge your mind, open your mouth wide, then Christ is going to fill. Tomorrow I'll continue my message. I will tell you how God moved in my life to start the cell system, mobilize the common Christian. Now we have more than 50,000 cell leaders, and they all become a wonderful leader in the church, and they are leading soul to Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you very much.